So um, what I've done is I've sectioned away just the front from the back. And we're gonna work with graduation on mine. I'm going to work with horizontal sectioning and we're going to build weight into the haircut. Um, so what I'm looking for is kind of like jawline length. I'm gonna build off of that. I'm gonna work a graduation that kind of puts that weight more onto that cheekbone area. Um, then I'll take it through into the back and then we'll cut a little fringe bang action at the end of it. So I'm just gonna get started. So again, I've sectioned my mannequin right behind the ear and I'm just going to work this particular panel first. So what I look for when I'm sectioning is where that's going to fall. So that determines where I section in this. And I really just want to section right before the hairline starts to drop away and become vertical. So more on the horizontal part of the hairline. So a pretty standard sectioning in that. And I'm going to come through with horizontal sectioning. So I'm actually going to build the weight with elevation. I'm not going to be cutting with finger angle and cutting it vertically. If you guys have questions, please feel free to ask. So first section, one of the key things here is I don't want to take too big of a section on any of these sections moving up the head because I'm using elevation. I'm going to be pulling the hair down below 90 degrees to create that graduation. If I take too big of a section, that's too much real estate on the head shape and it will build that weight quicker and heavier if I do that. So I'm having to take sections that are on the finer side so really about the thickness of my finger works for me. So I'll be working sections that size all the way up, the top of the, up to the top of the head. So my first section, I'm going to establish my length. And I'm going to actually let the hair fall and do that first. And then I will use elevation and I will graduate that line. So combing that down, letting it fall exactly where it wants to fall. Tap, 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 tap above that ear just to release any excess tension. And I'm going to come in and put my length in there. Just nice and clean with the scissor. And so you can see that's going to fit in around that area. Obviously, it might jump a little bit when, when it's dry, but that's exactly where I want it to be. Right into that crease under the ear, right where that jawline in the neck is. So now what I'll do is I'll actually use a little bit of elevation to bevel or to graduate, that's what that is, that edge. So I'm going to use an elevation that is on the lower scale to begin with to do that and pop that in. And that just tapers, graduates that edge. When I first cut that, that was one length, so very blunt, very strong. But I want to push that weight into there, so that's why I want to elevate through. So now I'll take my next section, same thing. Again, not too big of a section, because then that will affect the buildup of weight. Elevation is just like over direction. So if you're traveling, which I am now, I want my sections to be on the smaller side. If I have a stationary guideline, if I was going to bring everything down to number one, then I could take really big sections if I wanted to. So now I'll take that section, I'm just gonna pull that straight off the head and I'm gonna pull this one down onto it. And there's my guide, just pop that in. So the mannequin I'm using today is from Exalto, Exalto Professional, you'll find them on Instagram. Um, I have a code as well, if you, you want to uh, purchase any of their mannequins and stuff, it's DJ Muldoon, it's very simple. All one word. All one word. And Exalto are out of France. Uh, they make really good mannequins, really enjoyed using them lately. So I'm now gonna get rid of number one, because if I use number one, then I'll pull the head down to number one, and that will keep my weight very low accentuating more of the jawline. I'm going to push the weight up and push it more into this cheekbone area. So 
graduation 101, building weight, and I'm building it horizontally. So I'm bringing down into my previous section. So using a slight lower elevation, so not all the way down here. So it's just below 90 degrees. And that's the beauty of graduation, it's one degree up to 89. So it can have that effect of one length and it can have the effect of layering, depending on that elevation. So you can see now how that's beveling in to the edge. So if this was one length, that corner would still be there. We got a badge from nice. Lynette Murray. Why, thank you. So I started with the fringe in the front here. Um, but the way I sectioned it was um, from like the bottom of this hairline and then brought that around in like the high occipital here and then same all the way back around. Um, what I was noticing in my inspo photo was like a really heavy fringe right in the front. Now and these doll heads tend to have a really pretty aggressive hairline that wants to kick out. So I wanted to deal with that first. So what I did is I just combed everything so that the, the roots are laying flat and then at zero elevation just went in and kind of chunked that out on the fringe. And then I'm going to go in and same thing. I want to have kind of, you know, jaw length, cheekbone build up of graduation, build up of weight, so we kind of get this like exaggerated point here. But I also kind of want this hair to push forward a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is start in the back and then just being mindful of like where I want that bottom line of that bob to end, kind of a little, you know, cheekbone here. And then I'm gonna just kind of keep working forward like that as I go through pulling down into my previous sections until I um, get to where I wanna see that build up of weight and then I'll continue to pull down into that last um, section there. So I'm gonna put my shears down here. And now I'll use my razor. Another badge. Oh, thank well, you. Very nice of you guys. So I have this all, all of this bottom clipped away because I'm gonna deal with that afterwards and I kinda wanna have a bit of a floating bob here. So all of this underneath will be disconnected as I work forward. So I'm gonna bring this up to eye level so I can see and not have to slouch over too much. That part section. So I'm gonna be kind of walking with this line all the way through into the front. So I'm just checking to see like if I cut the hair here and I bring that line around where that where that's gonna hit in the front. A little longer than that. So this down to zero elevation. Combing that down, and then using a wide stroke to kind of create a lot more movement and broken ends okay there it is now i'm going to match that on the other side that way i, I can check my balance as i'm going through and not do a whole one side and then have to come back and try to fix or adjust the other side to match. So I'll be flipping back and forth between the two sides here. I've actually moved to my other side. I've stopped at the uh, natural round of the head of the parietal ridge on the first side and now I'm going to come through and do exactly the same thing. So I put my first section in that outline and now I'm going to build that weight. So same thing as before 
bringing that first section up and the next one down onto it. So the mirror would really help in this situation so that we can see our elevation. So I'm just kind of going with a visual here. Someone asked, how come you don't have real models? Um, well, real models, they're very limited as to what you can do on real models. So we have a lot of mannequins and we're teaching pure technique. So you can utilize this on humans yourself. So we're using real mannequins instead. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that was like a sarcastic question to be honest with you. It is nice to be able to come in and do what I want to do and yeah. not have to have a model. Exactly. We, we, work on, we work on humans all the time. When we do these free education things for you, we're not really bothered about working on actual people that have limitations and stuff like that. We want to do what we want to do to show you pure technique. And and if there's any models out there who are open, yeah. I would be happy to. Yeah, if you want to do that. See, it's quite difficult to find models too nowadays. Yeah. Everybody just wants a shag haircut, right? <laughs> and we can only do so many of shags for you guys. And again, it's just pure technique. I've been a teacher for almost 30 years. And I find that this is the best way for me to teach people pure technique. It really doesn't matter whether they actually have blood flowing through their veins or anything like that. So I'm just having a look at where we're at. Quite happy with that. So now that that's in there and I've got that up to the parietal ridge, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start to bring the hair down onto this section here so that I can create that weight line through this area now. So I'm keeping my graduation external graduation. So what I'm working on is this technique that you see here. This is external graduation versus internal graduation where I would continue my elevation pulling down into my previous all the way up to the top. See, when I do that, that really gets rid of the weight line. It creates more of that light bulb kind of effect. Whereas if I keep it external and I bring the top down below or to the natural round of the head, I then build my weight line and that keeps it kind of that wedgy kind of feeling. And that's really what we're looking for here. We're looking for that 1920s, 1930s Josephine Baker kind of situation, aren't we? Is that the area she's from? Yes. <laughs> Just winging that one. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about a couple of things uh, that we've been up to. We've not been doing lives here on my personal page. We've been over on my private page. And that's an opportunity for you guys to get exclusive access to all of our education. That's where we do weekly lives. We have haircutting videos. All of my world-renowned haircutting series are on there like KDF1, KDF2 and the classics and all of our classes that we do online we put on to uh, my private page. It's a subscription. Um, it works out at $25 a month if you get a year subscription or it's $29 a month and we do everything, we do lots of stuff every week excuse me, so there's weekly content um, not just one thing a week, we put loads of stuff on that. And again, that's just an opportunity for you guys to have exclusive access to what we do. Also, we're going to be in Orlando on June the 5th. And we are teaching a hands-on and look and learn class on Sunday the 5th of June. And then on the 6th of June, Monday, I will be appearing on main stage. Um, for a presentation with a friend of mine, Christopher Benson, um, multiple Naha winner, all that good stuff. I uh, used to not work with Christopher, but used to see Christopher all the time back in the day when I was working with Paul Mitchell and Vidal Sassoon and working on the platform circuit 
and traveling from hair show to hair show every week. Uh, so I'm honored that he's asked me to join him on stage. So I'll be there. So if you're in the area, come see us. Take the class with us. Um, Katie and Kelly are coming with. So it's not just me. And we're going to be doing a hands-on class. It's a three-hour class. That means that you guys will be cutting hair with us. Uh, we'll be doing about three haircuts. It's a three-hour class. And it will be unique to the show. So it's not something that we would be doing all the time. And you can sign up for that on the uh, Premier Orlando website. Okay, so I'm on that last section on this side. And again, I'm bringing the hair down to that level at the natural round of the head. So right at the parietal ridge. And that's keeping that weight lower now. It's pulling the hair lower, excuse me. So that's what's building the weight line within this little bob. Essentially what this haircut is, it's just a graduated bob. It's just shorter than the traditional graduated bob. So I'm quite happy with that. And then, as you can see, because my elevation moves above the hairline, you will see this little hole start to happen. That's your hairline moving up and uh, around into the fringe area. So, and this is the fringe area. So afterwards, we won't have that hole there. We'll be putting a fringe in there. So if you want to keep this consistent all the way through, you've got to keep your elevation below the round and below the hairline within that haircut. If not, you're going to copy what that hairline does. Someone asked, the first section was at zero degrees, yes. and then you pulled back, every other one was 45? Um, no. Uh, what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't talk about degrees of elevation other than zero or 90. I don't know if it's at 45 degrees, and neither do you. Um, so what I would do is just Think of like places that you can see in the mirror. So for example, all I was doing was pulling it actually down into my previous section. So technically that's probably like in the 80 degrees of elevation, not 45 degrees. 45 degrees is only one aspect of graduation and the chances of you hitting 45 degrees are extremely slim. You could have hit 48 degrees, 36 degrees. You only know when it's zero or straight out from the head, which is 90. So my first section was zero. Then I pulled it out and I beveled the edge. And then each section I brought was down into the previous. So just below 90 degrees. I don't know the correct or exact elevation because I'm not a mathematician and I'm not using a protractor. Thank you. So now again, I'm bringing everything down to that natural round of the head. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> so I came around, and then I was just going to show how I handle the ear situation with this and the razor. Because when I use um, the scissors to cut, you'll come down and you can tap this and keep the tension in your finger. But with the razor, we're cutting above the finger, so we lose that tension as soon as we cut it. So what I've done here, come on up. So as I'm coming around, I can see my guy that I want to bring around here, but we don't want to have this jump up over the ear. So I'll split that in half right above the ear, pull this down and kind of over direct this back a bit. So then it gets longer here and then I'll take that same section and then I'm going to over direct that to the front a little bit, still keeping at that zero elevation but just kind of sliding this forward so that we create that V right over the ear there. So as that comes down, it protects that line, that perimeter of the ear. So then I'm gonna be doing that same technique. Um, I just took down my next section as I'm gonna be going in and working on my graduation now. And um, since we don't have a mirror, I'm gonna be using my comb to kind of determine the graduation that I want. So at each section, I'm gonna lay just the tip of that comb and see what angle that comb is coming off the head and that's where I'm gonna be pulling the hair to. Kind of 
Coming around, I can see my guide underneath. And bringing that around. Again, using my comb to see where my elevation is, is too. So it's kind of like belly button here. Make sure I get enough hair from underneath so I can see where I'm going. Body memory, the belly button, and I can see the guide underneath. And just move forward. Now with the over the ear thing, that's only for that first section, just right over the ear. The rest of this, because we are elevating, it'll protect that outline. going to do that all the way up. Once I get to where the comb starts to lift off the head, so probably about there, then I'll start pulling everything down into that last um, cut section. Just coming through and just checking. making sure that's nice and clean, solidifying the graduation. Someone asked, can you explain what must be done to prevent that hole on the side from happening? So I'll, I did, but I will explain that once more. All right. So if you don't want this hole to happen, your elevation has to be below this. So I've elevated above that. So that's why that's happening. That's happening because that's what your hairline does. You see how it comes forward? It doesn't just go straight up. It actually climbs and moves forward. So that's why that's happening. If I don't want that, then I have to keep my elevation lower than that area. Keep in mind, I'm going to cut a fringe. So there will not be a hole there. This is the hair that falls on the face, not the hair that falls into the side. So I'll maintain that through here, as you can see. And then this will be gone later because that's going to be my fringe area. So always keep your elevation lower than the hairline. Then you will maintain that all the way through. Because my elevation has gone through, then that front will round. Right? That's what happens in every one of these haircuts when you use a higher elevation. So I'll cross check both sides and then I'm going to go into the back area. Making sure this is really nice and wet because I don't want the roots to dry in this like clipped away position. I want to make sure that this is just falling really naturally out of the head so that when they wear their hair, <laughs> when our doll heads uh, go out in the Outside, world. Outside, yeah. the <laughs> their blood flow. With all their blood. <laughs> their bone structure. It's my favorite one. So checking, again, body memory, where I want to pull this to. See my guide underneath. I put on our, my inspo photo on my Instagram if you guys wanted to see um, what Josephine Baker's hair looked like. Um, it's on Kelly Does Hair. It's always fun to, to, I'll nerd out and just like be going through. It's always movies that seem to inspire me. I just watched Chicago with my kids and was looking, analyzing all of their bobs because it was based in the 20s. So knowing that we were going to be cutting today, I wanted to come in and do something that was my brain was chewing on recently. We also did heroin before, because that's what everybody did back then. With what? <laughs> heroin? Yeah. And absinthe? Yeah. Oh. Drinks of absinthe and shots of heroin. It's the combination of jazz and liquor. <laughs> Just kidding. 
So now what I want to do is I want to take this into the back area. So I need to use the front as the guide. So I'm going to take that first section again that I had in the front. So I'll take this first segment right here. I'll just get this out of the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that into the back. So just bring it up so I can see the levelness of the line. So I'm just going to take that section and bring that all the way back, like so. So this is quite reminiscent of the kind of box bobs, French bobs, that I've been doing in my KDF classes, and I'm sure some of you guys may have seen my KDF 2 series, where we work this particular way of doing it. I like doing this because what it's gonna do for me is I'm going to establish the bob first before I do the nape. So a lot of graduated bobs are started in the nape, all right? And then we don't really get this right, so it's never right through here in the end. So the foundation doesn't end up being good, so the bob doesn't look good. If I create the perfect bob, then I can create a nice foundation afterwards. So all it is is just taking the graduated bob haircut and just doing it back to front and inside out. It's understanding how to cut hair and being able to do these things. The control of the haircut, understanding the mechanics of how things work. So once I've got that, I'll clip away this hair that I don't need. And it's also good to switch up what you're doing. Don't always do the same thing. Have a bit of fun with your, your work. So I'll take that first section that I had. Remember I brought it just slightly up. Once I put my length in, I've got the length now. So I'm just gonna copy that and I'm gonna take this into the back. So the line that I cut here now is going to determine the weight line within the bob through the back. So if I want it to drop, then I will do that with my fingers. If I want it to come up, then I'll do that with my finger angle. I want to keep it pretty much level, that very quintessential box bob look. So again, I'm elevating the hair above zero degrees. I've no idea if it's 45. I think the three elevations that you would ever really know if you think about it are 0, 90 and 180. Those are the three really, everything in between is up for debate, you need a protractor to really tell which one it's going to be. So now I'm looking at my bob line as it falls and looking at the weight line. Look at the distribution of weight and looking to see if I need to alter it a little bit. It's a little rounded through there, so I'll come through and just flatten that. And I'm quite happy with that. So now I'm just going to do the same process through here that I did through there. So second section, same thing. I don't want to take too big of a section, Also, I'll pull the hair too low. That will build the weight much quicker than I want it to be built, and much heavier. A few weeks ago we did a, um, a class called Bob's and More, where I did several different variations of this. That's available on my private channel, which is Knowledge Destroys Fear. Again, you can subscribe to that. So as our second month going, there's like 50 plus, there's 60 odd um, tutorials and haircutting series is in there. 
that you can have access to, access to whenever and wherever you want. So pulling down into that previous section now. And moving through. It's the same process as the front. So I'm working with the head shape. I'm following this all the way around. So I'm not bringing the head down to a stationary spot. I'm going to build through. So now I reached that, um, I'm finished on this side. You can see that build up here, it's hitting right at the cheekbone. So I've reached that this point where I want that build up of weight to sit. So I'm gonna be pulling this more out. Let's see if you'd like to come down. This out and being able to see my guide from underneath. Pulling that into it. So we're DJ and I are, are doing the same thing. I started back here, he started in the front. This kind of just shows that you know, knowing these fundamentals of these classic haircuts and how you can approach it just differently and with different tools, I think is um why we why we're doing do these it. videos. <laughs> exactly, that's why we do all these tutorials, is just to show you guys how to do these really classic haircuts, these fun haircuts, in a different way. Someone said your mannequin's ears are too low. Oh my God, I had a client the other day and I swear to God, her ear was like in the middle of her neck. And it was the wildest thing. I've never seen somebody's ears so low before. It was, throwing, it was throwing me for a loop, for sure. I don't really agree with that comment, <laughs> with what that person said, because the mannequin's ears are just like humans' ears. Yeah. People's ears are never in the same spot. That's what I, yeah, it was like down here, and yeah. then the other one was at a different place, so be, like trying to balance my haircuts was, was um, appearing to be a little difficult the other day, because I had never encountered somebody with their ears like just that, um, asymmetrical, I guess. Yeah, what's with the mannequin haters today? <laughs> Quick way to block. It's also like not nerve wracking doing the same haircut right next to DJ, just doing a bob right next to. <laughs> That's me just standing here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hmm. What questions do you guys have about razor cutting? I've got a, we got a hands-on class coming May 16th here in San Diego for razor cutting. I'm very excited about. We'll be on mannequins. We'll be on mannequins. <laughs> And I have a lefty in the class. I haven't taught a lefty with the razor before, so this will be... We gotta stock up on band-aids. I know. Stop and take a gander here. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So now that I'm just kind of like loosening up the hair here, kind of brushing out, like shaking out the roots from all of the combing that I'm doing and just letting it sit where it wants to sit, then I can dial in the fringe a little bit more. But I just knew that that was going to be a problem area, so I wanted to get that dialed in before I did the other part that I could, that I knew how I was going to attack. See, this piece wants to just doesn't want to lay this way. If I cut it this way and I cut it short, it's going to just kick up on me. So I'm just going to leave it that. But this guy can. You can join your friends, and you can too. This one, we'll go here. 
She loves it. Great. I'm gonna shave it off. Yeah, loves it. Now we've got, is this the octopus? The squid? The Carol Brady. The Carol Brady. <laughs> You wear with her ears, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, person. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I want this, I can see where my line is for my bob right there. I'm gonna come in with sections and then just use the razor to kind of like taper it down into that into the nape there. Just connecting that down. And as I'm pulling this out, I can see where I build up my weight with the, the graduation right here. And then this is that disconnect. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And then I'm gonna check to see where the hair is bending so I know where I'm heading towards with the razor. And as you can see, the hair is bending right here. So that's kind of the direction that I'm gonna go. little guy here. I just want to tuck that in really nice underneath. <laughs> She's sweaty. Oh, so warm. just looking here to see what kind of shape that I want to make with this. I know that I wanted to carve this in really nicely, but do I want to take that, take that end off and like blunt that out? Or do I want to leave a little bit of softness around the bottom? Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it off. Okay. It's gone. Yeah, we cut it off. Cool. And on to this side. So I'm just working on the other side. Again, I stopped at the natural round of the head on the previous side. And I do that just so I can see the balance don't want to do the whole thing and then realize oh it's way different so <laughs> hopefully we're meeting up in the center back which we are you <laughs> so you can see the bevel of the bob that's happening all the way through so that's what's happening i'm beveling that even more by using that elevation through so 
Again, technically my elevation is just below 90 degrees because I'm bringing it down onto the previous section. Someone asked, yeah. what are some things to keep in mind while doing graduation? Well, the first thing that you have to do is you have to understand what graduation is. Uh, most people I've found in my career teaching don't quite know the difference between graduation and layer. Um, they're both completely the opposite to each other. Graduation is a build-up of weight. So graduation has to be shorter at the bottom and it has to get longer towards the top. If at any point it follows the head shape, that means that it's actually layering. So you always want to be pulling down. So when you notice, when I'm coming through and I'm using my comb, I'm not lifting up. I'm not combing from the bottom up. If I comb from the bottom up, I'll lift my guide above 90 degrees. So that technically will start to create more of a concave layer if I'm not careful. So it comes from the top because that's what I need to do. I need to pull away from what I want to keep. That means if I want it to get heavier towards the top, I pull it down. It's just like over direction. If I want hair to get heavier in the front, I pull it backwards. So I'm just over directing, but I'm on a different, different dimension. And that's known as elevation. So anytime I elevate, it affects this. Every time I over direct, it affects this. So they're both the same, they're both movements. And the other opposite thing that you're using is finger angle. So it's my finger angle here that's actually creating the shape of the bob. And that is keeping it nice and level, parallel to the ground. A lot of people like to call that square, but again, a square has four corners. This is just a line. So I'm keeping it nice and level. There's no corners in this haircut so far. So I've pretty much reached the natural round of the head. So now I can start to bring these sections again down onto that parietal ridge. So again, keep that in mind that you want to comb the hair down, not up, so that you build weight, pull away from what you want to keep. I say that all the time. That's literally hair cutting. So you see the board that we have here? That's hair cutting right there. Literally everything on that board means to pull away from what you want to keep. That's kind of the, the phrase that I go back to too, if I get lost in a haircut or I'm you know, lo looking at a reference photo that somebody's showing me, right? Like where's the weight? Mm -hmm. Where's the shortest spot, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's working. It works. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm bringing everything down to this elevation right on that natural parietal ridge. So that kind of horseshoe round that you have. So I left a little bit of weight through the front, I noticed. So I'm coming through and just adjusting that. This left side's a tiny bit heavier than the right side. So coming through and correcting that. Again, down onto the previous, there's my guide following that around. So I'm literally following the head shape around. My body position, I'm stood right in front of everything I'm cutting so that I can see that that's straight out and I can see that my line is literally, it's copying this. That's what I'm cutting. Line here. I like her antennas. These guys? <laughs> <laughs> the stragglers showing up late to the party here, but they can be they can stay, so we're gonna knock them out there. Little bangs. A bob with bangs. Mm-hmm. And then they would finger wave it. And then they would get a glass of gin out of their bathtub. <laughs> Is that like the, what they call that era? Where you couldn't drink alcohol? The prohibition, yeah. So American, man, isn't it? No 
drinking. <laughs> Look at us now, see? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. I like her bangs. Thanks. Little, little bangs, and then it gives a really nice profile as well. Yeah, so that's my um, little Josephine Baker inspired bo razor bob that I did. I'm gonna set it. Um, gonna I'm gonna finger wave it, I think. Ooh, use the mousse or something. Yeah, let me go get a product. Do some hair styling. So you can see I'm bringing down to a stationary position, a stationary guideline. Going down onto that line. So my weight line is here. So the bob part is done through this side. Now I'll just bring everything down on this side and then I can work the nape area and finish with the fringe. Clips. She's a little crooked. Thank you. It's like your OCD right there. Well, I don't know. That was a good friend. <laughs> Thank you. Get my elevation right there. Your mom was looking at her phone. Thought I'd mention it before someone else yeah, did. <laughs> did they teach finger waving in beauty schools anymore? Um, I do. You do? Yes. Because I said, if I had to do it, yeah, you have to do it. Yeah. Oh, I think you've got to do that. That infamous stateboard set that we have here in We don't California. have it anymore. No, we don't do that no. anymore. No. That's like, I can still smell the gel oh my God. that we smell use. It's not. The, we the still yellow, have it. The yellow or the pink gel. You guys remember that? That's awesome. Yeah, we still have the pink gel. Yeah. That and shaving cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so much shaving cream. Yeah. The barbasol one. So again, bring it down, down to that stationary position at the parietal ridge. That's what's keeping this, uh, this graduation on the external side. You have to remember that hair cutting is a distribution of weight. So we have a buildup of weight, which is graduation. We have that removal of weight, which is layering. And we can keep the weight by cutting a one length haircut. But weight always has two elements. It has two sides to it. It's got a skinny side and it's got a bigger side, right? So that's basically what external or internal graduation are. They're heavy graduation or they're light or skinnier graduation. And that's the same with layering. You guys have heard of concave and convex. Those are the same things. Concave being the skinny graduation and convex being the bigger graduate, uh, layer, excuse me, not graduation. And so you always have those two sides to each of those techniques. I uh, just uploaded my uh, Knowledge Destroys Fear theory class onto the private page, Knowledge Destroys Fear. So you can access that now on my private page. That's three hours of nothing but theory, me taking you through all of this stuff on the board. Give them a look at that, Katie. Let's scroll through it. So this is basically just everything that you would need to know about haircutting on a board. And that's what we teach in our theory classes. It's the cliff notes, as we say here in the US. Someone asked, what's the meaning of a bob? Or like, what is a bob? A bob, basically, is an uninterrupted line that lives above the shoulders. 
So this bob that I've got, I've got a floating line, so it's above the hairline. That's what the graduation has done, is it's taken that, if you were to cut a one length bob, all I've done is I've taken that line and I've put it up here. So that's what a bob is. It's an uninterrupted line from front to back. So when you cut this imaginary long bob, it's not a bob. That <laughs> shoulder breaks the line, it interrupts it. So technically a bob lives above the shoulder. I have the long bob. Do you? Okay. <laughs> you have a in the style longest bob. You have an in style magazine <laughs> so bob. Long. Yeah. It's definitely a slob. <laughs> so again, stationary guideline for my elevation. So you can see that the sections above the round of the head would have been brought much lower than anything that was brought within these sections. I was only bringing down to the previous up to that spot. That's the beauty of graduation. It's one degree to 89 degrees. But everybody on planet Earth tends to think that there's only the 45 degree element to graduation. That's just one number out of 89 of them. <laughs> Again, if you don't cookie cut, you'll be able to control this and change where the weight sits on people. If you cookie cut all the time, you're just doing one size fits all, and that's not how hair cutting works. Some people don't need their jawline exposed. Some people might need their cheekbones complemented. So it depends on where you want to build. Okay, so now I can do the nape, the favorite part. Let me get rid of some of these clips though. <laughs> Just big old swingers. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> Ew. So if I wanted a really nice graduated mullet, this is where I would leave it. So I don't have to cut that if I don't want to. I could leave that nice mullet. I've got the graduated bob above it. We're seeing that quite a lot lately. It's quite the creative thing to do, um, to leave that out, kind of give it that jellyfish effect. So if you're doing something that's a little on the creative side, that's an option for you to work. So now what I want to do is I want to take the nape and connect it into the graduation. So the reason why I didn't start with the nape is because sometimes it's quite difficult to get the right kind of combination of finger angle, elevation, over direction to meet whatever length you want in the front. Right? It's quite an advanced technique to do that. Um, something that, you know, us people from Vidal Sassoon, very, very, you know, adapt at doing that. But most people aren't Vidal Sassoon trained. So what I like to teach in my classes is the alternative. See, now I've got this nice foundation, uh, this nice, excuse me, graduation, this bob. So all I need to do now, guys, is continue that angle into the nape area. So I don't actually have to start in the nape area. I create the bob first, and now I can start to cut this in. So I'm just gonna take vertical sections, and I'm gonna connect this through. So there you will see the angle. All I want to do now is continue that into the nape. Keep in mind it's graduation, it's got to get shorter. It cannot follow the nape. If it follows the nape, this part of the head shape, then the bottom will flick out. That's layering. To create graduation, you must see the V in relation to the head shape when you're working vertically. So I'll show it this way, you get that if you want. So as I'm coming through here, let's look at that V situation I just mentioned. So again, graduation has to be a buildup of weight. A buildup means shorter to longer. 
not following the head shape. So when I pull this out, what you'll see is when I've got my angle against the head shape, I'm creating the V. If it's the same length all the way through, when that falls, it collapses. That's a layer. That's the difference, build up versus removal. So to create graduation, I really have to taper that into the nape. That has to be longer than anything else below it. I'm not using any over direction because I want to stay consistent with the weight line I have above it. So this is the, probably the most difficult part of the haircut, it's getting that into the nape area. So in this side, my fingertips are pointed up, my thumb leads the way so that I can create that graduation. The other side, it will be the opposite. What I don't want to do is try and cut this on the outside of my fingers. If I try and do this, then I've always got to tell myself to keep the elbow in the air. And if I forget and the elbow drops, then that turns into graduation, uh, to layering. So again, keep it on the inside of the fingers. The swing of your arm is to pull down and you can also get that nice angle in there. Can you do this with the diagonal parting by using the traveling side of the guide? Can you ask that again? I'm not quite, quite That's how I, it's yeah. written. I'm not quite understanding that. Can I do this with diagonal sections? If I use diagonal sections, I'll have a tendency to get shorter towards the center back. I'm trying not to use any over direction. If I use over direction, it's going to get heavier towards the back. If I use a diagonal section and then cut graduation and no over direction, then I'll create a triangular shape, which is shorter in the center back. So I'm keeping my sections nice and vertical, up and down. When you take diagonal sections, guys, it takes care or it uh, affects much more real estate because if it's a diagonal section, right, then I'm taking care of all of this window that it's in. But if I take a vertical section, I only affect that panel. So that's why it's vertical. Again, no over direction. If I over direct, I'm going to start to keep some weight or build some weight towards the center back. So that's just taking that nape area in. Again, if you don't want to see that nape, nape area pop out like it does, then you've got to put your bob longer than this nape area, all right? You're always going to have that there because the hairline is much lower in the back than it is the front. I get the, that question quite a lot in my classes. I think uh, the younger generation are really not into seeing any of that nape area. They want the bob to be just the bob line. Well, my bob line's actually up here. It's not down there. So I'm always gonna see that nape. So again, straight out. Again, this is probably the hardest part of the haircut because of getting into that nape area. So you see how that just takes that in. One more section and then I can work the other side. What I don't wanna do is just keep going around. I'll have that tendency to pull the hair backwards if I do that and this side will get heavier. So I think the thing is to not get lazy when you cut hair be committed to what you're doing. Understand how you're gonna move the hair around and what those tendencies are.
So now let's do the other side and work through exactly the same way. So this side's gonna be different as far as my fingers. I'm going to be now pointing down, whereas the other side I pointed up. I'm moving towards the center, the thumb's going to lead the way. And if you noticed on the other side, what I did is I actually got rid of most of this area. I don't need all of it. If I bring this down, I might cut it by accident. That's how I'll create a hole in my haircut if I'm not careful. So I'll just pin that away so I can just work this. So that's going to be the longest spot. So it's the bob that creates the angle of the graduation for me. Instead of me trying to figure it out at the beginning if I was to start in the nape area. So I build the bob first, then I build the nape, put the nape area in. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm building the house first, and then I'm doing the foundation afterwards. I'm breaking all the rules. sections vertical straight up straight down we're trying not to put any diagonal angle to them if I'm not careful that will happen and I could start to get shorter and shorter towards the center back if I'm not careful So this being the trickier side, getting in there, just be very careful and patient with it. Don't cut yourself. I did on Saturday. Oh, <laughs> oh, did you do a cut? Did you cut yourself? Because I'm not patient. Oh. Actually, I don't even know how I cut myself. It happens to the best of us. Perhaps to Kelly on stage. <laughs> Guess what I did? I kept cutting her hair as my finger was bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> did you do that thing where you were like Wipe. pushing it with your thumb to stuff it? <laughs> There's a reason why addresses predominantly wear black. Yeah. <laughs> So working that in, I'm pointing my fingers towards the nape area. Tilt the head a little bit so it kind of opens up this area. I, this makes no difference whether the client has shoulders or not, it's the same situation. The client will pretty much always have shoulders, but obviously a mannequin doesn't. Okay. Yet. Yeah. We do have shoulders on the way actually from Exalto, they're sending me some shoulders for all you shoulder question people. So how I hold my scissors really helps me get into this area. If I hold the scissors just the same way all the time, like with my thumb through, then I'm stuck in that position. I can't move the scissor much. So if I do that, look at me trying to get into that angle. It's very hard for me to get in there. My hand's in the way, it's touching the neck. So what we do is we take the thumb and we put it on, on the edge. So that allows me to do stuff like that so I can get into these areas without tweaking the wrist all over the place. The more wrist movement that you have, that's like carpal tunnel's gonna happen for you. So try saving your wrists. And that's why people make swivel scissors so that your thumb is able to be moved around like that. If you guys are into swivel scissors, shark fins your, your jam. 
Have you cut with swivel scissors before? I have actually. It was a little trippy at first. Uh, again, I'm a little bit old school. So back when I started, those were so like a novelty kind of new situation. And obviously coming from so soon, we were like, oop, nope, none of that. <laughs> um, keep it super simple, you know? Vidal always said you could travel the world with a comb and a pair of scissors, but once you start getting everything else, you've got to put something, you've got to put all that shit in something and carry it around, haven't <laughs> you? So. So a bag. Yeah. It's cold and very scissors. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, our friends at Sharkfin, they've got great uh, scissors that are good for your wrist and stuff like that. Also, um, I use Mizutani's, so that's what you're seeing me use today. I uh, usually get asked that question quite a lot. Oh, well, someone asked if you're coming to Canada. I'm coming to Canada in two weeks. I'll be in Winnipeg. I'll be teaching a teacher training class at the Aveda Institute there. And then I will be back there in August teaching at Verde Salon. I think they're both private uh, situations. It's been a while since I've been to Canada, obviously, because of COVID and stuff. But looking forward to it. Canada has great candy, just like the UK. People are cool too, they're all right. <laughs> but no, our next class is that I was just in Detroit this past weekend. My next class will be in uh, Winnipeg. And then our next class will be at Orlando, Premier Hair Show. We'll be traveling over there for a few days, teaching some classes. We have a hands-on class on June the 5th at Orlando Premier Show and a look and learn. That's where you'll get to see myself, Kelly and Katie cutting hair. Uh, our hands-on class is a three hour class. That means you'll be cutting hair with me and the girls for three hours going through some awesome stuff. If you took our class last year, won't be the same haircuts. We'll be doing completely different class this year. And it's a special class, it's only three hours. So it'll be exclusive to Orlando Premier. You can sign up for that class by going on the Orlando Premier website, uh, which is orlandopremier.biz. B I Z or B I Z, depending on which side of the Atlantic you live on. Get out of my way. Someone says, please come to Vancouver. Oh, I've, I love Vancouver. It's been a couple of years since I've been there. Also, Minneapolis. Minneapolis, yeah. Love to come there. A few friends that live over there that have education. Toronto and Texas. Yeah, I was just in Texas right before uh, the holidays. Okay, so now that's in. Now I can start to just kind of play with that hairline a little bit. And I'll do the fringe as well. I think someone wants you to talk a little bit more about your private page. Oh, okay. Yeah, the private page, guys, is Knowledge Destroys Fear. It's there here on Instagram. Um, I've been advertising it. We've been doing the private page for a, the past month. Uh, we've got quite a few subscribers on there now. But that's where we put everything. That's where we do all of our lives now. We used to do them here on my page, but Mannequins are expensive, life's expensive, um, not everything's for free. Uh, so we have uh, our private page that keeps us able to do what we do. Um, we go live every week on there. We've got um, over 60 different tutorials on there. That's where all of my haircutting series are. So all my multi-camera situations that we have are on there. Uh, we have we do Q sorry we do Q and A sessions. I'll read. Look at this later. 
Once I dry this haircut, I'll refine and work on this balance a little bit more. I just want to kind of build the house first, then I'll decorate it afterwards. So now I'm going to come through and just work a little bit of fringe action, because it really wouldn't be what we were looking for without the fringe. Bob with bangs. Bob with bangs. I have a project for people. Where did the term bangs come from? Let's look that up. Ooh, Google it. <laughs> what, because in the English language, it's known as a fringe. But American English, people say bangs. And I've always like wondered. Somebody told me once upon a time that it was actually a carpenter's term for cutting wood in a blunt fashion. Um, but I'd like to know a little bit more about that. Let mm, me do some research here. Yeah. And we call it, we say bangs. Bangs. <laughs> Yeah. So the fringe, <laughs> the bangs, is literally from here to here, isn't it? It's that triangle that we always see from that apex down to where the hairline starts to go more on the vertical side. So it's really this horizontal part of your hairline in the front. So the particular bangs I'm going to do are not quite as short as Kelly's. And I'm going to use uh, a little bit of elevation as well when I cut mine. So I'll start here in the center. Take a central section. Let's get balanced. So right above the nose there, that's the, my first section. And I'm going to use an elevation, literally just straight off the head. And I'm going to cut a flat line. So I'm just going to layer that. See where that falls. Always cut it longer because you can cut more off. Don't get too giddy straight away. See how that hair reacts. This is such a focal point. You've got to be very careful. This is like the quickest way to make your client cry if you don't get it right, because they see this all the time. So I feel a little bit shorter than that, what do you think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Katie's the boss, so I always ask Katie's <laughs> approval on everything. So you see what's happening there, guys, is it's technically shorter at the bottom here and longer at the top. So we've got that going on. Now, when I do that, it kind of acts like a graduation because of the short and the long. So it really doesn't layer it that much. It keeps it kind of beveled. So it's just a very light layering on the edge. If I don't want that, I won't use any elevation in that sense. I will actually cut it flat onto the skin that will keep it one length. So I want it to get a little bit heavier towards the edge. So I'm just gonna over direct the rest of my fringe bangs area, that triangle, into the center. So if I wanted this to be a curtain fringe, then my elevation would be up here, it would be more layered. So that this is shorter, it's not actually getting heavier. All right, it's the same length through. So then you've got those layers that fall in cascade and curtain out. The idea is for the haircut to do it, not for you to be thumbing the haircut all day to make it flick to the sides. So this says, the noun bangs, meaning hair cut straight across the forehead may derive from the idea of the word bang, meaning abruptly. Wow, I thought banging was something else that was a bird. <laughs> As in a bang tail horse whose tail is trimmed straight across. All right. But again, you're looking up like an American thing situation now. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think so. They don't have the accent. Because we don't say that with the, 
at all in the UK. You know, in England, where the English language comes from. <laughs> <laughs> we originated the language. It certainly did. Actually, do you know it comes from Germany originally? The English language? Yeah, it's Germanic. So you see, I get that nice curvature by bringing everything into the center there. So that gives me that nice little fringe. Yeah, quite happy with that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration. Actually a full haircut from me today, wow. Mm. Usually do half. Uh, again, we'll be back on our regular Private Knowledge Destroyers Fear page for our next lives. Our next live is on Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Or is it 8.30? We do 9, don't we? 9. nine. nine. Yeah, we get here at 8.30. Yeah, we're, at, we're on at 9 on Wednesday morning on the private page, which is Knowledge Destroys Fear. Again, it's a subscription based. It's literally got everything on it. Uh, we do so much every week and every month on that page and you'll get exclusive access to that. You also get 20% off any in-person classes that we have um, here in San Diego at the factory. Um, yeah, so thank you for joining us today. It was great to see you guys again.